Om Shri Sai Ram. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, I'm. You are audible. We'll, we shall start this session with praying to Almighty with Shanti Mantra Sahana Bhagat. Om Sahana Bhagat Sahana Bhunat Sahaviryam Karavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 I offer my humble and reverential pranams at the divine lotus feet of Sadhguru Shri Madhusudan Sai, the founder of this hallowed institute of Sri Satya Sai University for Human Excellence, located in the district of Kalaburgi, Karnataka State, Southern India. I am Praveen Kumar TC, pursuing my master's in life sciences in this university. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the leadership board, distinguished faculty members, and all vibrant student community. It is indeed an honor and privilege to welcome a distinguished guest of unparalleled achievements and inspiring contribution to our society, Dr. Kiran Bedi, ma'am. Dr. Kiran Bedi, a trailblazer in every sense, stands as a beacon of leadership and service. As the first woman to join the Indian police service, she has carved an indelible mark in the annals of history. She was the former 24th Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry. Her commitment to fearless governance is evident in her latest book, Fearless Governance, which has been translated to multiple languages, reflecting her impactful journey. Apart from her illustrious career in law enforcement, Dr. Kiran Bedi is also a scholar holding a PhD from IIT Delhi and a postdoctoral Nehru Fellowship. Her multifaceted journey includes being an Asian tennis champion, a gallantry award winner, a recipient of the prestigious Raman Magsese Award, often referred to as the Asia's Nobel Peace Prize. Her life story has been immortalized in the biopic, Yes, Madam Sir, a testament to her extraordinary journey crafted by an Australian filmmaker. Dr. Bedi's commitment to social welfare is further exemplified by the foundations that she has founded, the Navu Jyoti and India Vision Foundation, which have tirelessly served the underprivileged in both rural and urban areas, as well as within the prison communities from past three decades. Apart from that, she also has served as a civilian police advisor in the United States, United Nations, peacekeeping operations. Notably, her leadership has been recognized by past surveys with Reader's Digest and The Week magazine consistently rating her as India's most trusted and admired women. Ma'am, to give you a glimpse of our university, this hallowed institution was established in the year 2018, where the pursuit of both secular and spiritual excellence is a paramount we align ourselves with the noble vision of our revered founder, Sadhguru Sri Madhusudan Sai. Our mission is to provide free, high quality education of global standards rooted deeply in Indian ancient ethos. We strive to create individuals with competent hands, brilliant heads and compassionate hearts, fostering an environment that encourages selfless seva and love for fellow being with a deep connection with Indian culture. Our founder, Sadhguru Sri Mansudan Sai, inspired by the teachings and ideals of his guru, Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba, is spearheading a unique global mission of service and spirituality across 33 countries. Since 2011, Sri Mansudan Sai Ji has established institutes of excellence, which brings respite to thousands of underprivileged and needy children through facilities of healthcare, free education, and free nutrition. Today, 10 super speciality hospitals across Chhattisgarh, Haryana, Navi Mumbai, Jamshedpur, Yavatmal, Telangana, Uttarakhand, and Karnataka, hospitals in Fiji Islands, Sri Lanka, and Nigeria, 37 modern day gurukulams across 28 campuses, a university in South India, 
and three overseas institutions are providing values based free education over 5000 boys and girls a morning nutrition program named shri satyasai annapurna breakfast program nourishes over 10 lakh school going children every single day in india and also across five countries 12 centers of human development in 11 Faith and well-being of all as one family. Sadhguru Ji strongly believes that children are the future of this world, and uplifting those who are in need will uplift the whole country. For we all are whole connected. Basu Dhaiva Kutumbak. Apart from this, Sadhguru Shri Madhusudan Sai Ji is championing the cause for rural and women empowerment, demonstrating an unwavering commitment to fostering. positive change in society his transformative efforts extend to providing significant support for female students pursuing post graduate studies at our university by offering a stipend of rupees 12000 such sadguru aims to ease the financial burden on their parents of these dedicated young women furthermore he has instituted internship programs with stipends ensuring that aspiring professional gain valuable practical experience while also serving their financial compensations the impact of these initiatives are evident and noteworthy that with an impressive 60% of gold medal students in this year's convocation hailing which was presided by the honorable president of india shrimati draupadi murmu notably many of these accomplished individuals are first generation literates highlighting the profound influence of sadguru shri madhusudan sai ji's efforts in empowering and uplifting the educational prospects of women in our community in a ground breaking initiative that reflects visionary leadership sadguru ji has pioneered the establishment of unique and entirely tuition free hostel free medical school at satyasai grama udenahi this historic endeavor was inaugurated by esteemed prime minister shri narendra modi underscoring its significance nationally on 25th march 2023 the core objective of this institution would be revolutionizing the medical education by dismantling commercial barriers and infusing ethos of compassion and values based care ma'am we are also delighted to remember that shri satyasai annapurna trust which is our form sister institution was awarded ngo of the year 2023 and most committed ngo at ubs forums earlier this year in the month of march by honorable kiran bedi kiran bedi ma'am without further delay we welcome ma'am once again to address this gathering over to you ma'am thank you praveen thank you what is it that you do in the university here Ma'am, I am pursuing my postgraduate studies in the university. Okay. All right. Thank you. My pranam to the founder, Guru R. Sai Baba. We all are his devotees in one form or the other. Uh, Baba is a part of my temple. Every morning, I say my prayers to him, and I'm grateful to him and bow before him. We are all devotees of Baba. i've grown up hearing about him and his uh, and the stories of his devotees so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be with you at such a prestigious spiritual evolved institution also want to say begin with saying my also pranams to sadguru shri madhusudan sai who founded this and brought it to this level and continue to expand and grow and Uh, serve humanity selflessly universally very very grateful as an indian particularly uh, for what uh, sadguru sri madhusudan has done as a clear as a very good spiritual successor of bhagwan sri sai satya sai baba also the founder as i see satya sai baba university for human excellence my gratitude also to shri b n narsimha murthy who is the chancellor who might may not see but without him uh, without gratitude to him 
my, my introduction will not be complete. Also, Professor Srikant Murthy, the Vice Chancellor, Sri Hanumant Rao Naidu, Registrar Administration, and Bupal Chidambar, PhD scholar, Department of Mathematical and Computational Sciences, and Secretary, whom I do see here uh, in the in the in the group here. So thank you once again, all of you students, faculty, whoever is present, sisters and brothers of this spiritually evolved institution. I want to thank you for this opportunity, the invitation to share a few thoughts of mine with you. Thank you for a beautiful little poster which you put in, in the social media, which I've also forwarded to uh, my friends and followers in the social media. And I would dare say that I have shared your poster with literally, literally 15 million people who are part of my social media handles uh, 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 on, all, uh, on all possible sources. I've done my bit in, uh, as a matter of gratitude for your invitation. There is background noise. Where is it coming from, Bupal? Would you like yes. to check? I, I, I request IT team to like disable the audio for them. Yeah, they can audio can be switched off, and when they are, want to ask a question, they may switch on the audio as they may like to see. Inspired by your invitation and the title, and I started to reflect on the subject you gave me, I went back and dived into my own thoughtful thoughts library and my own literature as to what is it that I would like to share. Uh, um, something which on which my life has also been based and the life of anybody who wishes to do well in, well in life earn good karma in life, grow up with happiness and contentment. I thought I would share with those basic foundational values, which I, you all must be, but I'm only recalling and reminding for those students present. I see many students also sitting there that all lives to be of worthy and to continue to grow and be and fruition and be of value to humanity as a whole to the near ones and the dear ones and universal humanity have to have the basic values and practiced almost daily, daily to achieve a life of excellence. Since you are the word, your university is promoting excellence. And I feel that without these values, which I, I am identifying right now before you cannot be, cannot be life of excellence. Therefore, let me begin with the list of certain values which I have identified for you, which is coming also at the sources coming from students, universities who have written their essays and earned awards because of their essays they wrote. And I'm giving you uh, the those values which have been identified by students themselves who became the award winners of, of the essays they wrote. And I'm surprised to see one of the first one the students who got the many, many prizes, the first value they mentioned is cleanliness. Cleanliness. Now you see how crores and crores of rupees of Indian money has gone down the drain because we never had toilets in the houses. And most of the Indian community were going, I have seen it with my own eyes and I've seen this change happening both sides is when Swachh Bharat in 216 was announced by our Honorable Prime Minister from the rampart to the Red Fort. And everybody was quite surprised. A Prime Minister, Red Fort, 15th of August, and he's talking about cleanliness instead of talking about certain other things of the nation. No. The first priority before the country then became cleanliness. 2016, August. And thereafter, crores and crores of rupees have been spent by the government of India and various NGOs, various corporates, very many individuals in building toilets. Why? Because cleanliness was not our habit. See, we were 
we would leave our chappals outside the home. We would take the shoes outside the home. We may, we may uh, wash our hands before the food. We may eat with clean, clean utensils. But imagine what we were doing. We were most many of our community, a very large percentage of our Indian uh, community was all easing near ponds and rivers. And what were we doing? We were fouling the same water which we which goes and runs into our sacred rivers. And the same water which was being also used to be retreated and drunk. So I would say the children mentioned cleanliness. We look at cleanliness of our homes, but we do not look at cleanliness outside. I see the dogs, pet dogs being uh, walked, taken for a walk by many pet lovers. What do they do? In the West, they carry little pouches and if the dog or the horse excretes on the road, they pick it up and they leave the road clean. What do we do in India? We take the dog for a walk and leave the dog shit on the road. For the others, houses, etc., feet to be spoiled. I've seen this happen. I saw this in Pondicherry Beach when I used to walk and I used to, my feet used to run into the excreta of the dogs. They would not lift it. But if you, they would go home, they would leave their chapels outside their homes because they think home was sacred. So public, public property, public lands, public spaces are not considered as important from cleanliness point of view. So I would think that as a value culture in India, imagine if we were, India would be so clean. We throw all our uh, dirt outside our homes, whereas we do, we clean our own homes spotlessly. And, and we do pongal and we do so many other things, celebrations, east or west, north or south, doesn't matter. But the question is, but we leave our excrete, uh, our, ex, our, our garbage outside the homes for the flies and the mosquitoes to come and breed and go into the other's home and cause diseases. So I would think cleanliness in physical form, also cleanliness in mind form, clean minds. Clean minds is very, very valid point. So I'm looking at those value systems which will create a foundation for excellence. Because without these value systems, there is no excellence. There's no excellent being a CEO excellent, excellent CEO, or in the highest of the positions. All our saints, spiritual evolved people were pra practitioners of clean surroundings, whether it's mind or was it body or was it premises. So I would say mind cleanliness is thought cleanliness, where you where you de desilt, where you desilt your own thoughts, which nurse revenge, anger, greed, etc. So cleanliness is one thing I'd like to open my presentation with as a driving home message that let's practice cleanliness, mind, body, soul. Homes, public places. And look cleanliness as, a, as godliness. As I said, cleanliness is next to godliness. So if we are all godly, in godly institutions, do we practice cleanliness, number one. Second, which I also have seen with my eyes and which we don't practice as a value, is dignity of labor. Dignity of labor. What do my, I mean by dignity of labor? We do not respect. Sometimes we practice untouchability. That's dignity of labor. We don't practice uh, uh, untouchability. We practice untouchability. I remember when I was very small and I was probably eight years old, we never had these flush toilets where you could flush. You know, we had night soil on some of our rooftops. There was night soil and uh, the uh, certain category of people would come and lift the night soil and leave the house clean for us because we never had those flush toilets. And we had a category, only those people, they were identified to clean the night soil. As an eight-year-old girl, I used to hug the woman who used to come and clean my night soil. And everybody around saying, hey, what are you doing, Kiran? What are you doing? How can you do this? You are now go for a bath. I said, shut up. She has done the most difficult work which any one of us can ever think of doing. 
she is the closest. It's called dignity of labor. If we don't uh, learn this and look how what happened to the untouchability movement, it left a whole large community of this country behind, backward, backward, deprived, deprived, and lost out and did not uh, bear the fruits of the growth of this country or the progress of this country. And today, so much is being invested, is being required to be done. What wrong have their parents done, children done to be to be facing discrimination? And that's why, you see, you had a whole Harijan movement and Mahatma Gandhi spearheading that movement because cleanliness, dignity of labor was not our value system as we grew. Cleanliness was not. Dignity of labor wasn't. Third, my uh, value system is diligence. We all uh, pick up a thing as students, as, as workers, as leadership. We pick up a project. We announce it. We make a stone out of it. And we disappear. Where's the diligence? Where's the persuasion? Where's the perseverance? No. Anybody is worth, if the worth they're sold, they would honor what they commit and they would declare. They would take it to by due diligence. Due diligence as a value system, whether as a teacher, a worker, a professor, diligence, even uh, for anybody in, in public life, even parents, diligence is very important where they see through a particular life, teacher seeing through the career of the child. It's called dil diligence, due, uh, due diligence. This is my third, where even Lord Krishna says in the Gita to Arjuna, said, thy will, thy will, the iron will shall enable you to smash the forces of rejection. And he asked him to be diligent and follow it through the end. That's what even Lord Krishna has to, talked about diligence to Arjuna in the Gita. So by diligence done, we can attain what we desire. We may desire, but without diligence, we do not uh, uh, obtain it. So this is third, my third friend's source of a key inspiration for all the students, educational community or others sitting here listening to me is diligence. Fourth, we respect our time, maybe time. Fourth is time, value for time. We respect our time, but we don't respect others' time. For instance, we got so many occasions and we get people to come and do certain things or they come very late. They, they take away others' time. They come late and they say, we have so much of leadership, which sometimes comes late or sometimes which says things which make no make no uh, no understanding or they go on speaking something which is not relevant. They're not respecting each other's time or large, large weddings or occasions or such celebrations where you invite people to long, long distances saying you must come, you must come. Travel, economy of time, economy of time, economy of time is very scarce in our society. I've seen many weddings in the last wedding season. They keep wedding places so far away from the town. And now they expect everybody to come. Travels four hours, five hours, even if they're not immediately family members who have to be present for the family and expect friends to come. And if they don't come, they get angry. It's respect for time. You are inviting somebody. That's why technology is narrowing this. Now it's respect for time and dis it's cutting down the distance. I think just as we value our own time, we should respect others. When we go to invite anybody, we should also see. I've seen many invitations come. Ma'am, it will take us only five minutes. Ma'am, it's only please 10 minutes away. I said, OK, I'm just now getting ready. Now, your place is already 40 minutes away. What are you saying five minutes? No, man, man, you just come for, come for five minutes. I said, I may come for five minutes. Please take into account one hour of going, one hour of coming. It's also two hours. And what time of the day? If I can come, I will come for those two hours. But no, ma'am, please come for five minutes and come and do this. You must respect people's time. If you really want it, and I also think I need to be there, I need to. But we should be reasonable with each other's time. So this is my next point. Then comes punctuality. is important that in places we do not see our, many of our leadership exercising punctuality. So these are very important for leadership, um, student life. Uh, without these factors, you cannot achieve a life of uh, wholesome excellence. Then comes duty, a sense of duty. Duty given to you. What's your duty? What's your duty as a student? What's your duty as parent? 
what's your duty as a as a teacher what's your duty as a, a, a as a maybe a spiritual leader what's your duty fulfill your duty be duty conscious as a well so be don't have to be told this is your duty what is your duty as an employee should you do duty only because somebody is watching you or should you do your duty come punctually do diligently value your time right why 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 should you be reminded so punctuality integrity honesty goes without saying without honesty there is no life there is no work then love nature if we were all loving nature my friends as a value you think we will have had this kind of eco eco ecological disaster no way if we would love nature and see the way nature continues to love us it continues to grow fruits and and distribute it continues to give us air it continues to give water so where is nature loving nature is a very very important value system if we continue if we get into in love with nature then nature is the one which is a lifeline value system would be different we will be not hurting nature we will not be fouling nature we will not be uh, 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 cutting nature but we would only be protecting nature i think nature is another areas next value system is friends is i will uh, do is five senses understand the five senses which nature has given the eyes the ear the nose the touch and the and the hear uh, uh, taste five senses are the five wonders of the world do we recognize them what we see what we want to hear what we want to feel five senses are the wonders you ask school children children what is the wonder, what are the wonders of the world immediately they say taj mahal or oh, the eiffel towers or the uh, grand canyon so now wait on wait on the five wonders are right away with you your eyes are the wonder your ears are the wonder your touch of smell is the wonder your hearing is the wonder all these are wonders of the world without them there, there is no wonder in the world you really have you want to have wonders of the world understand these five senses these are the value system that means you will never see anything wrong with your ears you don't want to hear anything wrong with your ears or you see with the eyes here or taste or smell or touch no you will start do dealing looking at your body as a temple as a temple you go to the temple but the temple is within you these five wonders of the world the temple is within you you are a moving body this body with these five senses is a moving temple go to the temple certainly go to the temple take your blessings but the temple is also within you these five senses this is a very important uh, then comes many others are courage how do you learn courage as a child how does how do your pair maturity of mind the spirit of inquiry the spirit of self discovery then comes the uh, value for money um, then sense of caring and compassion a good neighborliness or the team spirit is very very vital the teams how do we encourage rather than only competing competing how do you do a team spirit my entire life's work friends my policing my pondicherry work was all a product of team work i had some i i inherited sometimes very good teams sometimes i made some teams and sometimes i left behind some very good teams but everything was team work and that's why most of my book work is all dedicated to and i've always had a very special place for my team in the pages of my book saying here's my team spirit which made it possible and lastly not but not the least is is a value system which i would like you to take along is non violence which flows from courage of the mind and you cannot be non violent without being mentally strong gandhi ji's strength of uh, of non violence was his mental strength he was so courageous that was his strength that he inherited he, he practiced non violence and you see he over he and the entire movement of this country of non violence all through through way as a, as a movement which the british could not look uh, face any further the numbers in non violence of course there are those people who played a very major role in also showing that they could they could threaten the lives of the british and they did and they did in such certain situations it worked but the practice of non violence in general life is very very important now last thing which i would conclude by giving you a story of a pencil here is a pencil here's a pencil i want to give you the story of this pencil you see the story 
of this pencil. This pencil is of no value if it doesn't have a sharpener, if it's not sharpened, right? And supposing this pencil, but that this pencil, if it's not sharpened, it's a pencil, it's not used at all. And it's, it's, a, it's a, but if it's of value, it is sharpened. Life is also about like a pencil. Unless it's sharpened. Sharpening also means ups and downs of life. But it's of no value if it's not sharpened. But life is also like a pencil. Where you continue to sharpen your skills. You can't continue to sharpen your axe to make it better. Second thing is, now if the, if the life, if there was pencil in this, life in this pencil, it would, it would cry. But the question is, but it's of no value if it isn't uh, sharpened. So it makes itself valuable. Life, we, in our life, we make ourselves valuable by sharpening. It's like a pencil. Secondly, it leaves a mark wherever it goes, which means that if it doesn't leave, it's written, it leaves a mark wherever it goes. Our life also, wherever we go like a pencil, it leaves a mark. Third, like a pencil, it can write a mistake, right? But it also has an, uh, a rubber. It also has a, a eraser. And this eraser is learning lessons. You can rub it. And it erases, right? It erases. So remember, life is like a pencil. It's sharp. It needs sharpening. It can erase the mistakes because it, life does it's learning lessons because that's when it erases. When you learn lessons, you will erase the mistake because you learn to lesson. But the biggest message of this pencil is never forget what's in it. What's in it. And our in it is our soul, our value systems, our conscience, our divinity within. That's what Baba said. It's the divinity within. So when we say namaste to each other, it's actually a message of divinity to the other. I bow, bow to the divinity before you and you bow, bow to the divinity before me. So it is namaste. I bow to the divinity in you and you bow to the divinity within me. We recognize each other's lead of this pencil. So if we do this, I think whatever we want to become, professors, corporates, public servants, teachers, educationists, whatever we want to become. This is what it is. If, if this value system as a composite, which I mentioned as a list of value systems, I thought would, would, take us, would take us always towards excellence. Last but not the least, if you all heard the thing called Kaizen philosophy. The Kaizen philosophy of Japanese skill is every day make incremental improvement. Kaizen Japanese philosophies, incremental improvement, even if it's 1%. So in all our value systems, which I've listed for you, all the value systems which I've mentioned, let me revise them for you quickly. And is cleanliness, to, I began with, dignity of labor, diligence, time value, punctuality, being duty conscious, being values, valuing honesty, then loving nature, being courageous, having a, issues of maturity of mind, spirit of inquiry, self-discovery, evaluation of the cheer, kind and cheerful acts, recognizing them, practicing thrift, which was financial restraint, then being, being caring, and then teamwork, sense of justice, and nonviolence. And I told you about the story of the pencil. I thought this is, this is where I thought, I, I could share with you as my thoughts, as I reflected for your lecture, because you're such a prestigious institution. And I, I'm very, very honored to have been invited. I hope I've been able to make my humble, small contribution of these thoughts, which I collected for you this morning. I want to thank you once again for inviting me to such a great, powerfully, spiritually evolved institution and an occasion. Thank you so much for now. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was a very influential and inspirational talk by you. 
though it was very crisp, it was highly inspirational to all of us. And there are a few questions uh, I'm going to post in the group chat too, and I'll be back in this day. Uh, Sarah, ma'am, uh, there are a few questions that uh, our audience have asked. I'll be posting that same in the chat box and simultaneously telling in Bogat. In many of our institutions, in many of our institutions, particularly those located in rural areas, instilling values such as cleanliness and the dignity of labor, as you quoted, can be a bit challenging. So I am interested in in hearing about your experiences and solutions in addressing those challenges. Why should you not treat every human being as its dignity of labor? That's exactly what I mentioned. Dignity of labor. Where you value each other for whatever service he or she is giving. He's using his hands, hands to serve. So how are his hands dirty? If he's using his hands to serve, gifted by God, how is his hands dirty? And how does he become dirty? And how does he become untouchable? Why? How? It's the way you think. So that requires cleanliness of mind. That's exactly what is falling in the line of cleanliness. You have an unclean mind. It's an unclean mind, which is considered considering working hands, working hands who's actually cleaned up, cleaned up for you as unclean and untouchable. How? Why? So it's all a matter of thinking. Nobody's born. Nobody's born evil. You, I can shun evil, but why should I shun somebody who's working hard and providing my cleanliness? I can shun evil. I may not embrace evil, but why should I not embrace somebody who's earning his livelihood by whatever means? Whether it's work doing clean work or unclean, but making the place clean by cleaning up the place. So how? why should I shun that person? And why should I be away? Why? Why should I not be grateful to that person for what he or she is doing? That's my answer. It's all a matter of thought. And it's all in inheritance. This is the legacy. This is a legacy. This is a legacy. That's why certain temples have been barred from certain people entering. Why? Are they not human? Men and women, gender difference, are they not equally human? So these are, these are the challenges. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. It's a mind which has to be taught reason and explained the reason. As far as I'm concerned, this is my view. And I told you my view without even your raising this question, beginning with cleanliness. As a nine-year-old girl, I embraced the woman who came and create, cleaned up my night soil. For me, she was, the, she was the most valuable person because if she would not have cleaned my night soil and I would not have been able to clean it, what would I do? There would be nothing but disease in the house. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, ma'am. There's one more question. In the context of rural areas, where resistance to change and the adoption of new value systems can be significant, what approaches or strategies do you recommend for effective driving positive change in the villages? Work with the panchayats, work with the Maila Mandals, work with the members of the panchayat. We got lakhs of villages. Panchayats are elected, elected representatives. They also have the resources. There's a whole department of Panchayati Raj. Why can't Panchayats uh, be made to understand and go through certain value-based education, value-based classes as induction, as induction when they take oath or whatever, or swear uh, the allegiance to the constitution, Panchayat members are elected representatives of the villages. They need some induction courses. To, on towards environment, towards women's dignity, towards dignity of labor, and towards uh, peace and harmony, towards non-violence, to crime prevention, to youth care, to elderly care, to agriculture, organ, organic, all these should be part of the induction courses. 
So we have a panchayati system and we have Mahila Mandals and we have young panchayatis elected members. That is the charter of these elected representatives at the grassroots level. And these are fought on non-political lines. You don't have to politicize. You have to be village representatives serving the village. Serving and the village. imagine if every village, imagine if every village adheres to being nature friendly and also ensuring that they all have toilets in their houses and nobody goes and fouls the ponds, nobody ponds in the river sides and the canal side. It will be a different India. And it's so easy because we got a few lakh villages and they can do every five year induction and an, a fresh induction course. There's a whole department of panchayats. Number two, corporates. Many corporates can adopt villages. They, many corporates can adopt villages. And many corporates, PSUs, public sector units, are in the villages. Are in the villages. They can adopt certain corporate social responsibilities to promote uh, village harmony, village development, skills development, education, youth, youth leadership. Why not? Internships, apprenticeships, women employment. So many PSUs can adopt villages. NGOs can adopt villages and they have done. I work in the villages as an NGO. You mentioned one of my events. I'm doing a lot of water harvesting. A lot of water harvesting in the villages. And guess what? We as an NGO has to drive the change. Whereas it is actually the benefit to the benefit of the villagers. Why don't they volunteer? Why don't they get together? Why don't they contribute? Why don't they do shramdhan? And I assist. Whereas I do, and to take them, co-opt them along and request them join in. Government resources, NGOs, community, and the villagers should all work together in the villages to bring in water harvesting, um, organic agriculture, employment generation, skills development, uh, respect for dignity for women, um, uh, 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 respect for labor, all this communal harmony, this is the job of the panchayats. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, there is one more question. It's evident that young individuals occasionally find themselves making decisions under the influence of peer pressure, which may lead to errors in their judgment. How can one avoid succumbing to such pressures and instead making sound and informed decisions. Inculcate these value systems when they are small. All the list out of the value systems, which I mentioned to you, that's exactly the reason. You are talking over superstructure, where the man, the man has become a young man. Why did he not create, uh, exercise these values earlier? Parents are there to inculcate these values. Society works on. Parents, teachers, if these values are inculcated, They'll be like you and me. After all, you and me, whoever are sitting here, are those who are products of our upbringing. The key is upbringing. If we are brought up spiritually, we brought up ethically, morally, we would all become good citizens, responsible citizenship. We will not take foul decisions. We will, our minds will be clean. Our minds will not be polluted. So clean, cleanliness of mind, which I began with, if you see, remember, I began by cleanliness of mind. You will take better decisions. You will make better choices. You will not take choices which hurt others, which injure others. You will take choices which benefit all, yourself included. Yes, ma'am. Uh, one more, the last question, man. This is, uh, how was your experience when you were serving at Tihar Jail in New Delhi as a police officer and uh, you were famously called as Crane Baby? My experience was the here where people missed that. They abused their time. They abused their time and they abused others. They abuse their relationships. And that's why the liberty 
has been taken away from them so that they're no more a threat to the society. When they abuse drugs, they abuse parents, they cheat them, they run away from schools, they don't value education, and they're highly greedy and selfish. They have none of those value systems which I mentioned. When you don't practice those some of those value systems, you land up in jail if you're getting caught. If you're not caught, you continue to remain and found the society. So when I saw that, I know that was a sea of humanity, which had abused their time and resources and had tried to be greedy and cheat others' resources. That's why they're being punished. Court will punish them later. <clears throat> but the fact is that they have been left with no choice but to eat what prison gives you, sleep where prison gives them, next to places and uh, next to friends who will, they will never like to sleep with sleep by the side and have the dirty blankets or stinking blankets or funny punching, pin, pun, finishing, pricking, prickly uh, temple, uh, temples. That's why they're being punished. So I saw that. But challenge before me was how do I take the revenge from their heads out? Because they have to go out. One day they have to go out. So as Inspector General Prison, I had to, I realizing why they have come here because I'm a police officer and I know why they commit a crime. But as an inspector general of prisons, I had to work on rehabilitation and reform. So I started to reform them to work on rehabilitation. So from punishment, which they were already punished by denial of their freedom of choices, I start to reform them, educate them, take them towards spiritual lives, take them towards a moral way of living, thinking, ethical way, way of living, helping them out in many ways and teaching them forgiveness, compassion, these value systems. I taught them all these value systems. All the value systems I have told you, I was teaching them on a regular basis as IG prison. Through panchayat system inside the prison. I created a whole panchayat system inside the prison. Prisoners became panchayat members, became, making them more responsible for educating. Teachers became... A prisoner, educated prisoners became teachers and removing illiteracy. I brought in IGNAU, I brought in National Open School, I brought in skills development, I brought in computer systems, I brought in libraries, I brought in publishers, I brought in spiritual leadership, I brought in max, uh, meditation programs, I brought in bhakti inside, festivals, everything that a healthy society has. So I try to make a healthy society of 10,000 prisoners, a healthy society, where whatever it has taken their way, drugs also. No smoking inside the prison. I took away smoking from inside the prison. No smoking inside the prison. Till now, no cigarettes. Uh, earlier, canteen was selling cigarettes and smoking and uh, making money for welfare fund. I said, there's no welfare fund. You're only promoting tuberculosis because everybody is doing passive smoking and smoking. So I took away uh, their uh, smoking which was a very big challenge. The prison could have gone in for a big revolt. When I took away the smoking, it was the toughest decision I took. And prisoners almost revolted. I took the challenge of revolt and handled the revolt for a long time. All collectively as a team. And I told you about my teamwork. I had a very powerful, strong team. It's all written in the book called It's Always Possible. The book I've written here in this, the documentation of all this work, including no smoking in the prison is a chapter. I brought all these are chapters in the book called It's Always Possible. And it's a, document, a book called Transformation of World's Largest Prison in a Democracy, in a Liberal Democracy. So this is all documented. That's what I did, working on rehabilitation and reform. And it worked. And it worked. It worked very well. Worked how? It got recognized by the Raman Maxisse Foundation and got me the Maxisse Award, which you know is equivalent to Asian Nobel Peace Prize. I did not work for an award. I worked because that was my duty to do. It was my duty. Nobody had to tell me what my duty was. That was my duty to reform and rehabilitate. And I continued to do that through my foundation, which I founded, educating prisoners, children, etc., and I have a foundation called the India Vision Foundation, which carries forward all the reforms work, which I did started in 93 to 95. 
It's 2023-24 now. The work has continued. And it spread to all prisons in India. I continued. That's called diligence. That's called perseverance. So what value systems I've shared with you, I have been an integral part of my life. And I've noticed life cannot be like this without all these list of value systems I give you. Sairama, ma'am, you were talking on team building. I see PM Nair, my colleague, one of the IPS colleagues, PM Nair. I see PM Nair also very, very illustrious police officer of our times. He's done huge, humongous work in prevention of human trafficking. So you, I see PM Nair, an IPS yes. retired colleague. Yes, ma'am, I'm there. Thank very, you so much. Thank you. Very nice, PM. Sairam, I have a question on team building, which you, you were referring to. Like within a team dynamic, what strategies can be employed to foster an environment where uh, where everything is acceptable to have differing opinions and agree to disagree? Sometimes we see in teams like uh, philosophy of my way or no way. So how to break this and have a foster Which were only yesterday I was listening to Steve Jobs. And he said, this is the way we res resolve our conflict. And I'll tell you what he's, he, he used to do. So I heard him on YouTube. And it was probably, a, I think it was a snippet probably, or maybe on the reels. And he said, this is the way we resolve conflict. He was interviewed. Yeah, the interview. was asked, the question was asked, how do you resolve conflict when there are differences of opinion? He says, we don't impose each other's opinion. We get together in a room where everybody has an opinion. And we don't leave the room till we all accept what we agree on. He said, this way, we all get the buy-in. We don't get divided. So we listen to each other. And we thrash out the advantages and disadvantages. And finally, we all agree and leave the room only after we finally agreed on what we what is larger good. So he said, this is the way we resolve conflict. So that's team building. So there, therefore, rather, he says, rather than I hear you, you hear me. And the majority decides. The minority is sulking away and minority goes and destroys the whole system. He said, no, we don't do that. We get together in a room, however it takes, say we will not leave the room till we amicably come to a, a conclusion which is understood by all. So put in your points and we go through the pros and cons and then choose the best. But then everybody agrees to it. This is the way Steve Jobs and that's why he's the, the iPhones is a billionaire company. Thank you. Hereby, we conclude the question and answer session, ma'am. Uh, we heartfully thank you for making time and inspiring all of us, the young youth men and women. And as you rightly mentioned, that how an institution or an NGO has to work for the benefit of society and societal welfare. Sadhguru Shri Matsudan Sahiji also has this tripod understanding of Sarkar, that is government or governance. Samaj, that is uh, the society, and Samstha, the institution. All these three stands as a tripod and at each edge and work together for the social benefit. Once again, we all extend a warm and hearty thanks and gratitude to ma'am. We wish to see once again and again and again here physically at Satya Sai Grama Mudinahalli, a 40 minute journey from the Bangalore International Airport. You are always welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Want to thank you, thank the entire uh, team of Satya Sai University for Human Excellence, and most of all, your your uh, founder, Sadhguru Sri Madhusudan Sai and his team. Want to thank you all for pr being present, Praveen and Bujul, Bujpul, and all of you sisters and brothers present. And thank you, P U P N, for showing up. And uh, it's been an honor and a, a blessing to see you. That's why I wanted to see you. I wanted the cameras on to say that we get to see you. So see you and that you we have at least some visible contact because it make it makes speaking easy rather than to a blank screen. You see, speaking to a blank screen and speaking to faces visible like see, I see PM smiling away, like it's he's right across me. So I see Bujwal and Oliver Praveen, all of you smiling, and many teachers. I see Mohan KG smiling. Sanjay Bhagat smiling, Manjrekar. See, I can see your names. I can see your faces. 
And that makes Rajni, Satin. I see these names, Vijay Lakshmi, Satigiri. I see them. It makes sense. So thank you so much. That's why I said, uh, uh, keep the cameras on so that you inspire the speaker to connect with you. Thank 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 you. We will end this session with Thank you, Shanti Mantra. Thank you. Thank you. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti